Toy Story was directed by John Lasseter and stars the voices of Tom Hanks and Tim Allen and is, of course, the first Pixar movie, an incredible, monumental achievement that helped that company become one of the premier animation studios in the world that still operates today. But I also want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, Sundays. Sundays is fresh dog food made from a short list of human-grade ingredients. Sundays was co-founded by Dr. Tori Waxman, a practicing veterinarian. Sundays contains 90% meat, 10% vegetables, and 0% synthetic nutrients. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, fresher breath, and more energy when switching to Sundays. Some of you guys haven't met Polar yet, he's our new dog, and he loves Sundays. We've tried a lot of different foods with him, and he's not always excited about them. But he clearly loves Sundays, and it's been a big hit with him. Unlike other fresh dog foods, Sundays does not require refrigeration or preparation because of their air drying process. Just pour and serve. Sundays makes it easy to feed your pup top quality food, even on the go. Every order ships right to your door, so you'll never worry about running out of dog food again. And it's extremely easy to store and serve. And you can get 35% off your first order of Sundays. If you go to sundaysfordogs.com slash Stuckman or use the code Stuckman at checkout. Thanks so much to Sundays for sponsoring this video. Just like Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl a few weeks ago, Toy Story is back in theaters now. And I got to see it on the big screen for the very first time. This movie came out back in 1995 when I was just seven years old. I didn't see it then, but I did see it at home with my clamshell VHS copy that I watched probably 100 times. This film had a massive impact on the industry that I of course didn't realize then, but would come to understand over the years as hand-drawn animation was largely phased out for theatrical films in favor of computer animation. And while I certainly don't love that, I do love this movie. It's about toys that come to life when you aren't looking. Woody and Buzz. Woody is a cowboy with a pull string in his back, and he's very used to being Andy's favorite toy. But when Andy gets a Buzz Lightyear action figure for his birthday, that all changes. Setting in motion a chain of events that will challenge Woody's reputation amongst all of the other toys and force him to become friends with his new enemy. Like I said, I did not get a chance to see this film in theaters when it came out, but a year before Toy Story hit theaters, I have a very vivid memory of seeing The Lion King in 94. I remember sitting in the theater, I remember being in between my mom and my dad, I have Images still in my head of looking over the seat in front of me, seeing Simba and Scar fight. All of that movie is kind of burned into my brain. And a year before that, in 1993, when I was just five, I remember seeing The Three Musketeers, which is currently my earliest memory of being to the theater, and my mom can't remember an earlier time than that. So The Three Musketeers might actually be the first movie I ever saw in theaters. So this tradition was happening where my parents would occasionally take me to a Disney movie. I don't know why I didn't see Toy Story. Maybe they were turned off by the computer animation and thought it was too modern or something, but I eventually saw the film and it became, for a long time, my favorite Disney movie. For so many reasons, and as an adult watching it, one of the biggest ones that stands out is how perfectly paced the film is. At just 81 minutes, this film moves like lightning. Like The Lion King, which is of a similar length, every scene in both of those films matters. And every scene is big and important, and something is always happening, whether it's a song by Randy Newman or a fantastic joke, many of which are actually very adult-themed, and I loved picking up on them over the years, because as a kid, I didn't know what Buzz Light Beer meant, and I didn't know what it meant when Woody said the word I'm searching for I can't say because there are preschool toys present. But all these elements coalesce to create a perfectly paced movie. I think as a kid, just the idea that your toys might have been alive when you leave the room was enough to entertain me. As an adult, so much is happening emotionally in this movie. You're watching someone who feels like his place in life is assured until it's suddenly not. And how do you deal with that? And Woody goes to very extreme lengths at first to win back his position, putting Buzz's life in mortal danger. And Buzz is also a wonderful character because he genuinely believes that he really is a space ranger. 
He doesn't understand that he's a toy. He thinks he really can fly. He thinks the little light bulb on his arm is actually a laser. And so the dynamic between these two characters is absolutely fascinating and very, very funny. It is just the perfect dynamic for jokes. Woody can always make fun of Buzz for this, but Buzz doesn't even do anything and he becomes incredibly popular just because he's so cool. Which, of course, enrages Woody. And Tom Hanks and Tim Allen portray these characters for laughs and for tears. They are iconic as Woody and Buzz. And the topics the film chooses to explore, that of fear of being tortured and supposedly killed by the next door neighbor Sid Phillips, who loves to make bizarre creations with his toys, dismembering them and forming them into other beings. And when Woody and Buzz first meet all of these toys on their little adventure, they believe they're cannibals. That they just go around eating other toys and killing them. It's, uh, it's... <laughs> Rated G for some reason. And one of the more beautiful aspects of the film is Buzz's arc. He's got to come to terms with the fact that he is not a space ranger and that he is a toy. The choice to have him accidentally see a commercial of all the Buzz Lightyear toys is brilliant, followed by a really great song from Randy Newman that I've always loved, and a truly heartbreaking scene where Buzz leaps off of a staircase believing that he can fly only to find out that he's crashing to the ground. But after that, I think the funniest scene in the film follows, because Buzz gets wasted with Maria Antoinette and her little sister. <laughs> Buzz as Mrs. Nesbitt is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Like the, this realization that he has to come to terms with not being a space ranger, and he does so by getting wasted on tea at a tea party that's hosted by Sid's sister. I mean, really phenomenal writing, truly. We've seen Toy Story a billion times, and it's sort of like imprinted in our brains, like it's in stone. But when you truly think of the creation of it, and you imagine that blank screen, and someone writing this, these are all phenomenal choices. And beyond all these great character interactions, and of course, what the CG animation did for the industry, and how stunning it was back in 95, there's small choices too that really add to this film like Woody and Buzz infiltrating Pizza Planet, which I can't look at or think about without wanting pizza. It's just in my head. It's like Home Alone. If I watch Home Alone or Toy Story, I immediately want pizza. But while they're infiltrating Pizza Planet, Woody is in a cup, and every time he runs up and down, his hat bumps against the straw, creating this hilarious sound effect. Quickly, Sheriff, the airlock is closing. <laughs> Little choices like that are just genius. And as implausible as it might be that Andy and his mom go in a completely straight line while they're moving, I love the action sequence of Buzz and Woody trying to catch up to that truck. It's thrilling still. Randy Newman's score is outstanding alongside his songs. We rarely see films like this anymore that truly feel like they've launched like an empire. Not just a franchise, but Toy Story is so ingrained in kids and adults alike that it's tough to imagine it even being made you know i mean there's these films like raiders of the lost ark or you know a new hope star wars where you're like so used to it existing in our culture that you have to remember that people came together and made this thing and pixar really just outdid themselves in every way when it came to this film there is, however, one plot hole if you want to call it that that's always kind of nagged at me and that's that buzz freezes when he's around people, even when he believes he's not a toy. And I think something like this easily could have been explained away. For instance, if Buzz said that he had some kind of directive from Star Command to freeze in front of indigenous life forms on other planets, that would explain that away. In reality, it would just be that instinctually as a toy, he knows he's not supposed to do that in front of people. He can't show himself to be alive in front of people. But something in his crisscrossed wiring is telling him it's actually just an order from Star Command. There you go, it's done, plot hole gone. But you kind of just have to roll with it. It's never bothered me ever, <laughs> I'll put it that way. It's just one of those things you think about sometimes when you overanalyze something that just doesn't quite make sense. Toy Story is a perfect film as far as I'm concerned, and I'm gonna give it an A+. If you guys missed my review for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, I announced in that video that if I were to give something an A+, I'm gonna do it. 
It's the only grade I'll ever give. And I think I forgot to give Curse of the Black Pearl that because I totally would give that movie an A+. Anyway, guys, thank you so much as always for watching. If you did see Toy Story in theaters or you're going to, let me know how the experience was, if it was fun. Thank you guys as always. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.